tapering, which is understood, but the reality of what tapering means, I think, will come to the fore over the course of the next four weeks as we go into the September uh, Fed meeting. The second risk, which is less understood and, and uh, priced in, is the change in the Fed chairperson. Uh, ben Bernanke is leaving the Fed in January, and there's a lot of uh, uncertainty about who is going to now take over, whether it's Janet Yellen, Larry Summers has popped into the picture lately. And just that change creates uncertainty in the market. So I think that's a, that's a risk. I think the third risk out there is the German elections. And it's not so much about the elections, but the constitutional court ruling that we expect post the elections in Germany which could rule the OMT, uh, which is the ECB's uh, bond purchase program, right. uh, illegal, essentially. And that would be a very uh, negative event for, for risk markets broadly. We don't think that that's, gonna ha that's what's going to happen, but there's uncertainty around that. And I think the fourth one is with regards to Japan, there's a lot of angst right now about the consumption tax increase that's coming next year. What are they going to do about that? Are they going to actually let it go through and risk the economic recovery? So those are the four things from a macro standpoint I'm looking at pretty closely. I'd say the last one that I'm concerned about is just the earnings growth. has really been very, fairly tepid in the United States, even though stocks have continued to do well. I'm suspicious on whether multiples can continue to expand until that earnings recovery reaccelerates. We expect that to reaccelerate, but will it be fast enough? I think it remains to be seen.